I'm gonna check real quick before I get into it. If I go too far forward, it yells at me. I gotta, no, no, that's the video. Oh, got it. I gotta do both. Okay. So what's the rule here? If I step like right past this bar, it's gonna be upset with me. Okay. So I gotta make sure I stand here. So thank you very much, Kenzie, for the introduction. So. Um, Yes, I'm a UWF student, among many other things. Those of you who know me know I have just billions of things on my task list. So, um, Christian, I'm only here because Christian has been bothering me for like three months to come present something. And so I finally decided, okay, I'm going to go up and uh, present one of the things I've been working on for about a year here. So, idea by design, like Kenzie said, real, real brief description is that we're revolutionizing human resources. And we're doing that because we can save a human resource manager up to a quarter of a million dollars per hire because of the way that we run our platform. And I'll explain why that is in just a second. So we have a problem in human resources. There's a lot of problems everywhere, but human resources has a big one that we think we can solve. And that's that, these scary numbers. I won't go into the particulars of a lot of them, but I'm gonna go across the top row. So 47% of small businesses can't find the right people to fill positions, either because it's too difficult to find them, there's no one available that can fill that role, or because they just can't make a decision um, for a number of other reasons internal to each company. 80% of employee turnover is caused by poor hiring decisions, meaning that someone made the wrong decision, the wrong call on hiring someone, or it was the only person that can fill the job and they weren't quite qualified for it, um, and some other reasons of why exactly those employees don't fit in that role. And then 62% of all employed persons in the US are looking for a new job, um, mainly because they're employed in the wrong industry for their degree. So I'll get to the bottom here in a minute. That is that quarter million dollar number. These other two are about diversity in certain industries, um, especially Number one industry that has this problem, tech, big tech, because they employ largely white and Asian males, which is becoming a problem for the industry and really is a problem across a lot of industries that we think we can solve as well. So this is coming from two fronts, this problem in human resources. It's one, low quality resumes and low quality job descriptions. People aren't good at presenting themselves and companies conversely are not good at presenting who they need either. Oftentimes human resource managers are not skilled expertise in the field that they're hiring for and the company managers, the people who are writing those job descriptions or giving them what they need, don't exactly know what they need either. They're not consulting the right people or they're not putting it together well. And then the other front is that human resource managers are overwhelmed. They sift through thousands, thousands of resumes to fill a single job position, and that's just too much. I once heard uh, a joke, and I, I, don't, I have to pardon whoever told it to me because I don't remember who it was, but they said they were a hiring manager for a long time, and what they would do is they'd take the top half of a stack of resumes and they'd throw them in the trash because they don't like to hire unlucky people. So another problem, and this one is a little bit more complicated, I won't teach you quantum physics today, but I'm gonna to touch it just briefly, is that we have a problem in computing that's about to break everything that's secure. So all cryptographic systems are secured in a certain way. They all rely on the same fundamental problems. Prime numbers and things like that, I won't get into it again. A little bit too above my head even, and I study this stuff. So all cryptography, all secure systems, including the ways that we transfer information like resumes or personally identifiable information, PII, is gonna be broken within the next five years. And that's because of quantum computing, a field that's really on the emerging tech side of the world, but it's rapidly coming to the consumer world because quantum supremacy, the point at which quantum computers are better than typical computers, the computers you have at home, is achieved by what are called 49 qubits, really small units of computing information. And Google, or IBM already has a 50 qubit prototype that they're about to start selling to consumers to put in your computers. Google has 72 and they're working on building theirs right now. And another one just came out this past few months that's 128, so rapidly surpassing this barrier. Of course, technology evolves at a, at a very uh, exponential scale. So this problem is going to get wor only going to get worse and this quantum supremacy is what breaks all secure systems. So this is something that we're looking at solving as well. So what are our solutions? What does Idea by Design do? There's two different platforms that we have. I'm gonna start off with NuNet, which is our human resources platform. It's smart matching. So it's not only matching people to job descriptions a lot better, but it's also matching them without bias. And I'll get into why that works and how that works in a second. We're also looking across all fields. We're not limited to a certain field. We're not limited to tech talent acquisition. We're not limited to business talent acquisition. We're limited by exactly what people put into it. They can come with any problem and we'll try and solve it. So what exactly do we do with NuNet? We take in a resume or a job description because basically if you look at the two, they're written the exact same way just from the different angles, right? A job description is here's the skills I want and a resume is here's the skills I have. You just have to rack and stack and match them up perfectly, which is the very difficult task that human resources are overwhelmed doing. So we take a job description or a resume and we come up with a zero to 100, basically a scale 
of every possible skill that we measure of how good you are in that particular area. So for example, when I put mine in, what comes out is computer science, which I hope is the case because that's what I've been studying for years. And then artificial intelligence and a couple other things are up there at the top, and then it goes down from there. English and literature is not exactly my top skill, so that one's a little bit towards the bottom. And we take all of this and we're trying to fight bias here because of a certain problem that comes with this system and how it's applied in other platforms. So I'll get into our market research and our competition later, but basically the way other platforms have this, apologize on my little stray N over there, is that imagine we have the word chairperson, right? We have gendered forms of that word. We have chairwoman and chairman. Basically the same thing. It's the same person, just the only thing different is the gender. So if we imagine taking all of these words and putting them on a giant scale of how much something relates to business, and then where it is on this gender scale, we get chairperson related to business. It's a little up here on that business scale. And then chairwoman is all the way left on our gender scale, and chairman is all the way on the right, because that's the only differentiating factor, right? So what if we look at a term like chief executive, chief executive officer, CEO, or any of those C-suites? Well, ideally, you'd think they'd fall CEO, especially on that business scale and about center on that gender scale. But unfortunately, the way these other platforms work, the way that they pick, they pick these people, is that we end up with CEO over here on the male side. And it's not just with business, it's with a lot of fields, especially tech, which is part of where this problem is coming from, is that these other platforms, the way they do it is they end up with the CEO over here on the right. So we try and move that over to the center and keep that neutral where it's supposed to be to try and meet that problem. So we take all this, we take this 0 to 100 scale from a job description and a resume and match it as closely as possible. Job seekers see jobs that they relate the most to. Human resource managers see people that relate most to the job that they're trying to fill. And then you can pick from there and start the interview process, start a secondary resume round or however you need to hire that person. Our other platform to deal with the other issue relates also to human resources, and I'll tie that in at the end. And it's called Nuno, and it's addressing that quantum supreme, that quantum security problem. So what we're building is using blockchain technology. This is like I don't like to put that in my uh, opener because a lot of people tune out there, but I promise it's something to look at is that we're making it quantum secure. We're making it secure into the future because that problem that we have is very pressing. It's in the next few months that we're going to have this issue with all cybersecurity basically going out the window. So what we do is we do identity management using this platform. Not only do we make it quantum secure, but we've made it so that we can transfer files across people. So for human resources, for example, you have to send emails back and forth or have a Dropbox or some means of transferring a bunch of personal information, your resumes, what have you, and that becomes a bit of a problem. You end up with that giant stack of papers, which is not ideal. So this is a way for us to, one, transfer those files, and two, keep it secure well into the future so that we don't reveal pers people's personal information down the line. So that's what our two platforms are, and this is our vision, is to change the way human resources work and then also to change the technology that we currently have to solve some pressing issues in today's time. So a little bit of our future, and I'll answer the questions on these in a second as well. Of course, you think we have those big players. Um, we have, for example, in job searching, you have Indeed, Monster, Google Jobs, LinkedIn now has its own job platform, and those are great. But again, they face that issue of they're matching people not quite unbiased. And that's part of the problem. In addition to, they have a very large pool of people, and they're targeting in a very wide range of job descriptions as well. So they need a little bit smarter platform to face that issue. And then, my apologies, and then in blockchain, this one's a little bit harder to get into because the, the blockchain world is very broad in how these projects work, but we have a couple competitors there. Just the way that they're implementing their system doesn't quite meet the needs that we have and that we think we can supply in these industries. So lastly, our audience for our smart matching and identity management, of course, that's going to be those job seekers and those human resource managers, the people that we think can benefit from these technologies. And then for our blockchain application specifically, we're also going to target developers that would like to use something that's quantum secure, secure well into the future. We can start building this platform now so that down the line, these developers don't have to scramble to fix all of this broken technology. So our approach is kind of breaking down exactly how we're working on it. As a startup, of course, you work a little bit different than a typical business. So we're working to, one, work with companies who are looking to either face a diversity problem in their industry or who are just looking for talent. Like I said, 47% of small businesses can't find the talent that they need, so they're the ones most in need of this, not those large corporate entities. One, and then the next, we're connecting with experts and other people in these fields, artificial intelligence, emerging tech, human resources. We've already had really, really productive and thought-provoking conversations with people, not just here, not just where the rest of my team is, because we're distributed across a couple states, but really around the world. We've talked to some experts in these areas. 
And then lastly, for our blockchain application in particular, building a community of developers and people who will benefit from this technology, having a very productive discussion with them of how to implement our technologies to best work for them. Monitor today, and I'll leave that for questions. So we have already the, the, the resume application you can go and use now. So it's newnet.io if you want to go put in your resume. You basically just copy and paste the text into it, and then it'll spit out what your skills are. Um, on the internal side, you, up, you upload it as a Word doc or some other document, changes it to a PDF for you, makes it look all fancy, and then it spits out your skills as well and keeps track of them over time to start matching you to jobs. For Nuno, we're working on that now, and I'll get into that in questions as well with our development team and where we are. So meet the founding team, that's me on the right. And then on the left is our CEO, the person who does all the business side of stuff, because like I said, business, English, literature, not on my top rack and stack. Uh, he manages all the business side of things, reaching out to these experts and starting these conversations. Um, and he's up in New York, actually, Rhode Island, that area. So I'll take any questions. So there's a couple accelerators that we're working on right now. Um, because it's such an emerging field and there's a very limited number of quantum computers, it's hard to get into. It's pretty selective. So we're not very high on the list, but we're hoping to, yes. Because um, in addition to the quantum secure applications that we're making, we also want to take our new net, our smart matching application, and use quantum computing to speed that up, too. Um, we have some ideas to make our model better. So that whole CEO moving that problem, a way of speeding up how to fix all of the words that are misaligned there across a bunch of different boundaries. We're using it more of the latter there. So looking at other applications, the way that we're building it actually is, I guess it's kind of both. Because the way that we're building it is we'll be able to swap in cryptographic functions. So for example, cryptography is outdated every couple of years. Um, what we design now to be secure, as is with this problem, will not be secure in a few years anyway, even if we're trying to make it quantum secure. So we have to make this sustainable. So we've made it so that you can swap out cryptographic functions later on as new technology is developed that needs to meet the needs of cybersecurity today. So we've made it so that you can build on this blockchain and then use whichever cryptographic functions suit your needs. So we've kind of made it to work with other platforms, but not directly with those platforms, really just expanding onto it to use the cybersecurity functions that we have. Um, and then a little bit of just we're trying to change, change up the uh, landscape of all those companies. Like you said, we're more of a competitor to a lot of these platforms than we are um, somewhat of, a, of an ally or an open source solution for them. That's what we wanted to fight. Um, it's an issue, actually, the way that I even got involved in this was, was quite a roundabout. Um, because um, Basil, actually, sitting in the audience, was reached out, by, reached out to by Kai a long, long time ago because all he found was some blurb somewhere that he was the president of the AI research group here at the university, which is what I now am. So uh, he hooked up with me because he had too much on his plate. And really, I have too much on my plate, too, but I've made time for this. And uh, he, he passed it over to me. So it's very hard to find talent, especially to find talent that's diverse, especially with the way that these platforms work. You go on LinkedIn, you search for tech expert. Uh, I guarantee the results are not going to be uh, too encouraging in that regard. Can I ask you the business question? Because so we can talk through the business model. I can, uh, yeah. So the way that we make money, I'll go back to that slide then to hit that point. Um, there's kind of a few different avenues, and these will change as we go along. Um, but we have one, fees from the job postings and job listings. So the way that current job sites are, it's very hard to post on them because it can be quite expensive. Um, so we're looking, because of the way that our platform works, to make that a lot cheaper, for one. Um, and then also, we're making it so that that resume part where someone comes in with their resume and has it analyzed to figure out those skills, that part will be open and free so that someone can use the platform, at least get an idea of where their skills are, where their strong suits are based on their job description or their job descriptions from their previous jobs that are on their resume. Um, the real fees will come from the companies trying to post listings and find people. And there'll be kind of different tiers to that of how in-depth we search, how much we prioritize finding their talent over others, and for example, how much we target, say, location for where we're getting their talent, because we can target that as well. Look at zip codes and such, and try and pin down someone that's close by so it's less, you don't have that moving cost, things like that. 
Um, we also have fees from transactions. So the way blockchain works, I won't get too deep into that. I tend wired. There's a session on that, so go to that. Um, but we'll get a small amount of fees from using that from people using that platform, um, which will come to us, and that'll be useful for us to kind of as a as a sustained funding. It won't be a lot, but it'll be a nice addition onto the fees that we're getting from really our real our main product here. And then gains. So we have some small ownership of one the tokens in that that. Uh, application, and then also, of course, our, our own ownership of the company that will eventually you know, reach value. Um, so my plan is to stick with it and try and get it through that phase of one pre-seed funding, seed funding, get it sustained on itself. Um, that's actually the, the, the founders there is not the entire team. We have two other people right now, and we're looking to get a third that are working on the other applications, so I'm not the only person here. Um, we have one person that's leading the blockchain development, another person that's assisting both the blockchain and then a little bit of what I do, and then I handle mostly the AI part, but I'm looking to get someone else to help me too. So hoping to grow it at least on that scale and within the next three to six months. Um, we have a plan of getting 300 users and 20 companies by the end of the year, hopefully using the platform, um, which shouldn't be too hard, right? Those small businesses are struggling so much that the, that's who we're targeting first, is reaching out to the small companies that need the help most, not larger players and trying to make big deals for right now. Um, but we have a plan and we're looking at some accelerators and things to try and get us to that point. Okay, now understanding that English is my strong point, tech is not. <laughs> okay. So the, the main thing that powers the AI part of the platform, um, the website and, and the, the way that the actual interface works for users is all things that I do. Um, the way that we process the... So we use Amazon Web Services, um, a couple different languages. Um, Python is one of the faster ones that we use for our AI processing, and we're looking to make that even faster with things like C, um, which is really low-level programming language that is a lot faster. Um, and then for, for blockchain, there's a, a couple different things that we're using um, for our, our distribution of our software. It's Git, GitHub is how we host it, so we have somewhere to save it. Um, once we get to the point where we're ready to open that up to the public, that'll be out open for anyone to get and, and to make modifications to and suggest ways to change it. And then um, using, we're actually taking Ethereum, which is an existing blockchain, and changing it so that we can use it the way that we're, we're aiming to use it with the swappable cryptographic functions. Understand the words, don't understand the tech. <laughs> the tech is very complicated, and that, that would be a whole 30-minute presentation on its own. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. So the way it works, I'm going to move back actually to that CEO slide because it will be helpful to explain this a little bit. But basically, we take all words. Oh, there we go. All words. So you see these two axes, axes, right? We have gender and business. So this is actually a much, much larger scale. So there's about 300 different axes here that we're measuring. Um, it can go really as in-depth as you want. So if I take the words chairwoman and chairman and I'm trying to find the business aspect that's common between them, you take these two words and they basically have a, a number representation, 300 numbers long, or however long we want it to be as precise as we want. And that tells you where exactly that word relates to every other word in the English language. So you take these 300 dimensions and you find the differences between them and you can tell where that gender scale is. If you just take all, if you take man, woman, men, women, all of the words that are just purely about gender and about quantifying gender, you can find that line for what gender is in this, in this very complex 300-dimensional plane here. So it's a little bit hard to visualize. That's so why we, we boil it down to basically this. Um, but that's how we di differentiate. We're not looking for particular words. We look at everything that you say. So if you put in a resume and you, for example, take the short job description for one of the jobs that you worked, we're going to take every word in that. It can be an inconsequential word. It can be something about what exactly you were doing, be about the people you were working with. And we take this very high dimensional representation and figure out where does your job fall in the English language or in all jobs. So you're going to fall, for example, as a CEO, you're going to fall a little bit on the financial side, a little bit on the business side. And maybe if you were CEO for a tech company, you're going to get that tech angle in there a little bit. So if you find where you fall in this very high dimensional representation, you'll fall somewhere in that realm where you can tell exactly on all of these different scales where you fall. So that's where we dif differentiate is we're not looking at particular words. We're looking at everything. You may have said this, but you mm -hmm. Accuracy rate, so that can be hard to quantify because what we're taking is something that's inaccurate and trying to make it more accurate with a number scale here. So, so, so 
Yeah, it's better than it was before, but it's hard to quantify that. So we have some kind of uh, controlled tests. So we take some resumes that we know exactly someone's skills that we've come up with our own quantification of how, as a hiring manager, we'd want to see that person. So we've taken, say, um, one, we have a tech CEO who, who has given us their resume and said, here's basically my history. Here's, here's everything that I've done. Here's what I'm good at. And then we take that, we process it every now and then, look at the results and make sure that it aligns with reality. So that as a hiring manager, if I were to take on that person, it about aligns with how I would perceive that person's skills to be. So we have some kind of controls like that, but it's a very hard thing to quantify when we're taking something abstract and trying to make it concrete. All right, when, what about, hmm? some people are notoriously bad with spelling and things like that. What happens with that? Story? So what happens with that, we kind of have a control for that of checking words. Um, so using your normal, that, that looking at particular words, we can do that and try and find some replacements and make suggestions because they, exactly that's part of the problem is some people are just not great at presenting themselves. Either their grammar is broken, their spelling is broken, and for whatever reason they're just not presenting themselves well. We have a little bit of control like that where we can go and fix individual problems with spelling or things of that nature. Is grammar there, is a little bit harder. Is there any, I don't know what the word is, but where, they, where something, if you just can't figure it out, can be kicked out and Right. That's the kind of things that we'd highlight to the, to the person putting in the resume or the job description of, we tried our best, however you did this, it is so messed up we can't even fix it, so you're going to have to deal with that. Yes? Uh, either one. I, I didn't see your hand. Sorry, you're behind the pillar for me. I'll let my boss go first. Okay. Carolyn. <laughs> That is a very hard question because I have a lot of things that I would give up everything else for, which kind of contradicts itself, right? <laughs> so what I'm trying to do here is build a team that can do all of the day-to-day -day operations that don't require me, right? So I'm building that team of technical people that can hopefully sustain it. So if something were to happen or if I were to get occupied with something else, I can step out of the company. So that's part of, I, I have a contingency plan with exiting. Of I have a team right now that I'm incredibly confident in. It's taken us a while to find them because we're making the platform to help us find the people that we need to solve this problem. So we kind of have to solve the problem ourselves, chicken and the egg problem. Um, so we've, we found people that we're really confident in and that, will, that are those people that can give up this for everything else because this is their full-time occupation or what they're focusing on. So I have a contingency plan in case that I can't do that, which is very difficult for me, one, as a student. That's my main challenge here. We have two quick questions. Yes. Yes, so we've actually, we've worked with a couple different people. Oh, no, my presentation is going to go out here. Oh, well. Um, we worked with a couple different people, um, both from Fortune 50 companies that have either dropped out of that because of the culture and, and they're trying to change it from an outside perspective. So you know that? Or do you have read about it? We, we know that. We've talked to people who, who are from those industries and we, we've set up, there's actually what's called Dear Tech People, and it's another organization that's looking to try and solve, this, in particular, the tech diversity issue. Um, and had a, she has a TED talk on diversity and hiring and a diversity in technology. Um, had a great talk with her. Um, there's, there's companies on our list from Fortune 500 and Fortune 50 that we're looking to target um, when we get to that point. But we're definitely, we're looking for those small businesses because if we build up that, all the small businesses to support us, then we kind of have that buoy of we, we can fight the larger players or partner with the larger players. And then on the GitHub question, um, that's what we're using with that blockchain platform is trying to find the talent out there that wants to be involved with this. And then yes, that'll be one of our kind of streams of pulling in talent to work on this project is finding those people that already on their own are willing to help with it. And then we can just bring them on into the company. As, your, uh, as far as using it, GitHub. Right, because uh, they can be Right. That's kind of an interesting perspective. I hadn't thought particularly about GitHub, but I'll definitely keep that on my mind. And I'm going to come back. I skipped your question earlier because you let Carolyn go first. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually have two questions. Okay. I can't think of much on my resume that's gender specific. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's maybe me just being blind to that? And there are so many things that might seem gender specific? Right. And that's a perspective thing, right? So if you give your resume to 10 people, 
10 different people looking at it and getting different perspectives. One, their skill breakdown of what you're good at is going to be different because people latch on to different words. They find different things important depending on where in the hiring industry they've been working, they'll focus on certain things more than others, right? So they'll discard in their minds about 25% or so of whatever they're reading. And then part of it is that some of those people are coming in with that inherent bias. Whether or not it's intentional, we all kind of take certain words to mean certain things, right? If you say doctor, for example, that, that's the, that age old example, if you say doctor, the first thing that pops in most people's head is going to be a man because that's how much that industry is dominated by, is it's a very male dominant industry. If you say nurse, it's more than likely going to be a woman. And that's not a problem in itself, but it's those inherent biases that are going to prevent people that have the skills and have the qualifications from getting those jobs. Whether it's gender, whether it's race, really any, any possible metric that shouldn't be a part of the hiring process is going to be taken into account just a little bit there. And, so, and then your other question, okay, yeah? You mentioned earlier too, um, which I totally agree with, it's mm -hmm. not just the people and the way they write their resume to see their skills, but right. also the way the job description is written. Yes. Does that, when you earlier entered the presentation there, mm -hmm. when you earlier said that typing your resume and spits out kind of your skills, do you have that same um, sort of function for the job description side so that people can kind of get feedback on whether the job descriptors are? Yes. So from a user perspective, you go in with your resume, you upload it, you have a profile that kind of tracks over time because people go between industries, right? I may be in tech now, I may be, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of